Hello everybody. In this video, we are going to look at some more exciting maths from topic two, lesson six. And we're going to look at example five, using the discriminant to find a particular equation. All right, so in this example, we're looking at what values of b, value or values of b, will cause 2x squared plus bx plus 18 to equal zero. And we just want to look to see when it has one real number. So we're going to go back to the idea of the discriminant. And sorry, this three is here. I screen captured this when my video was counting down. So we're going to look when b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero. Because when it is equal to zero, we have one real solution. My a in this case is going to be two. My b in this case is b, because we don't know what b is quite yet. That's what we're trying to find. And my c is 18. All right, so let's substitute our values in. So we have b squared minus 4 times 2 times 18. And let's see here. We're going to, and this is going to be equal to 0, because again, the discriminant. We're going to have b squared minus 144 equal to 0. And what we're going to find is our solutions. So we're going to have b squared equal. This is a binomial. That means there's two terms. And since there's two terms, I'm just going to add 144 to each side. You could also factor. You could think of two values that multiply to give you negative 144 and add to give you 0. Um, that will give you the same solutions. Take the square root of both sides, plus or minus. And we get b equals plus or minus 12. So in this case, to get a single root, we have two different equations. The first equation, or sorry, not two different roots, two, one root, we have two different equations. We have 2x squared plus 12x plus 18. And the second equation is going to be 2x squared minus 12x plus 18. So these are our two um, equations that will give us a, a root, a real root of 1. And if we click solutions, they did the same thing. It's pretty quick. We could find these values pretty quickly. Now let's look at the triad, because I think the triad is actually um, a lot different than, sorry, I've got my snipping, snapping tool, snipping tool, snipping tool, um, than the example. So I want to just kind of do this triad with you guys. So here we have, again, we want two non-real solutions. So thinking about that, that's b squared using the discriminant minus 4 times a times c needs to be less than 0. But what I want to do is I want to find my zeros first. I want to find graphically where my graph hits. And this is just so that I could find the values that are less than that. All right, so I'm just going to take my b squared minus 4ac, so 4 times 5 times 5. I'm going to make this equal to 0. I know it wants to be less than 0, but I want to find this point and I want to find this point so I can find this area here. So I get b squared minus, what is it, 100 equals 0. Um, b squared equals 100. I'm adding 100 to both sides. Take the square root So in my discriminant here, I found that we hit the b axis, because this is b, at negative 10 and 10. All right, we have a positive leading coefficient, which means that my graph, so basically we're going to find the bounds. So I'm going to look to see what happens on the left of 10 between these two and on the right. And we're trying to look for the negative number. So when b is equal to negative 11. I like how I say it, 11 and I put 10. So we're looking at left of this point. We get 11 squared minus 100. 
we're going to see if this is less than zero. So 11 squared, negative 11 squared, I believe is 121. So this is 121 minus 100. Is this less than zero? Well, no, 21 is not less than zero. I like how I put the equal there, Don't put the equal there. This is not true. So we know we're not dealing with any numbers left of negative 10. We're just looking for a bounds here. Let's do when b is equal to zero. We have a negative 100. Is that less than zero? Yes, that is. So in this region here, so what we're looking at is in this region here, we are positive. Then in this region here between these two, because again, this is the only place that we could actually go from positive to negative. We are negative. And in this region, I guess we're going to be positive, but let's check this out. So I don't know, any value greater than 10, I'm just going to pick 11. So again, we're at 121 minus 100. Is that less than zero? No, that is not less than zero. So we are, my bounds for B are going to be negative 10, less than B, less than 10. And this would be my solution. So any value between negative 10 and 10, not including 10 and 10, because 10 and 10 are zero. And if we have zero for B, then we are, actually we're still good, but if we're, if we're between negative 10 and 10, if it's negative 10, we're going to be at zero here. So zero is a one real root. Positive 10 is zero. So that's going to be a real root. So these are our bounds for our try it. Um, so again, a little bit more complicated than the example, but we did have values. I could plug in any values for this. I'm just going to type in here. Let's see what they want us to do. So they do want, there are two real non-solutions for negative 10 and 10. So this is the way they would want you to write it out. All right, guys. So I hope you found this video helpful and I will, oh, you know what? Really fast before I leave this video, let's look at the concept summary. This is going to wrap everything together that you've learned in the last couple of videos, your quadratic formulas in here, and then how to use the discriminant and what the discriminant really means. So take a moment and take notes from your concept summary. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will see you in the next video.